So in this series of videos, we're going to discuss and demonstrate an approach to pelvis and sacrum somatic dysfunction diagnosis. First, we're going to start with pelvis diagnosis. Then we're going to move on to sacrum diagnosis. And then we're going to go over an example of how you can combine the two to collect the information that you need to come up with sacrum and pelvis diagnoses simultaneously. So now beginning with pelvis diagnosis, we're going to first of course, we want to make sure that we brief our patient on what we're going to do, and then we can begin our screening test. So I'm going to be examining a few different areas on your pelvis and sacrum, so the bone all the way in the bottom of your spine, and also the bone here, the kind of the big bones where your hips are. I'm going to be pushing in a couple places, kind of in the back here, uh, down kind of along those bones in the back. Um, also, the bones in the front here on the sides, and also the bones kind of down here. And I'll let you know as we get to each place. Is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. All right. So to begin, uh, we're going to start with a screening test. And for pelvis, that screening test is uh, the standing flexion test. So I'd like you to go ahead and stand up for me and face away from me. So now with the standing flexion test, we're going to drop down and bring our eyes to the level of our landmarks that we're going to be looking for, which are the PSISs. From here, we're going to put our hands on the iliac crest, and then we can follow the pelvis posteriorly until we find our PSISs. So now once we've found the PSISs, we're going to have our patient bend down forward from the top of their head. So go ahead and bend forward, and we're going to be watching the PSISs as they bend forward. Come back up, and we're going to be looking for the PSIS that moves first and furthest. And go ahead again. And what we see and what we notice is this left side seems to move uh, superiorly and anteriorly first and furthest. One more time, really nice and slow. Yep, there it goes, there it moves, and very clearly positive on the left-hand side. Go ahead and stand up. So that gives us an indication that there is an iliosacral or an anominant dysfunction that is oriented on the left side. So now we're going to remember that because each of the landmarks that we're going to identify next, we're going to be naming for the side of that positive standing flexion test. An alternate screening test we can use for pelvis diagnosis is an SI compression test. Now with our patient supine, we're going to bring our palms onto the ASISs, and we want the ASISs to rest between our thenar and hypothenar eminences in that space in between. So we can find our ASISs by coming to the iliac crest, pressing down, following along until we find those ASISs. Once we find the ASISs, we replace our fingers with our palms, and then we can let our fingers rest along the pelvis. Now from here, we press posteriorly to engage the SI joints, and then we want to alternate our pressure posteriorly on one side and then the other, one side and then the other. We want our force vectors to be towards the SI joints. And on exam, I find that there's a greater restriction of motion on the left side indicating um, a likely innominate dysfunction on the left side. So now uh, I'd like you to go ahead and lie down, face down. So now we're going to position our patient in a prone position. And as an optional step, we can also reset their pelvis by flexing their knees and lifting their knees and hips and extending their hips slightly. Uh, to reset their pelvis. Now that our patient is prone, we'll recall that anytime our patient is prone, we want to make sure that we're standing on the appropriate side so that our dominant eye can be closest to the midline of the patient. So because I am left eye dominant, I want to make sure I'm standing to the right of my patient right now so that my left eye can be over the midline of the patient. At this point, we will move up to the posterior superior iliac spines. So I'm going to be pushing on some bones in the back of your uh, pelvis, okay? You can find the iliac crest again, and then follow along those iliac crests until you find the PSISs. Here they are. And you hook underneath them, creating a table with your fingers, and you judge their superior and inferior deviation. Now, as we can see in this example, the left PSIS, which we identified as the significant one because our standing flexion test was positive on the left, that left PSIS is inferior. We can also check medial and lateral deviation. 
And if we hook just medial to the PSISs and we push laterally, we can notice that this left PSIS is a little bit more medial than the right one. If we were to create an imaginary midline here, we would notice that this left one is a little bit more medial. As an optional step while our patient is prone, we can also evaluate the ischial tuberosities, which can help us evaluate for shearing of the anominate. One of the best ways to find the ischial tuberosities would be to um, start with the hamstrings and then move up to the ischial tuberosities as the hamstrings do attach into the uh, ischial tuberosities. But we want to make sure that our patient is aware that we're going to be doing that as this is a potentially sensitive area. So I'm going to be pushing along the back of your thighs, pushing up until I find the bones that you sit on. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we can place our thumbs on the hamstrings, create some tension so the patient knows we're there. And as we get towards that horizontal crease of the buttock, we would push anterior and superior, and then we're going to find our ischial tuberosities. And on exam here, I do not notice any uh, significant deviation on one side versus the other. Let's go ahead and uh, flip over onto your back. So now we're going to position our patient supine and when we do we want to take that extra step of resetting the pelvis. How we're going to do that is we're going to lift the knees, flex the hips, and then we're going to ask our patient to lift up their hips off the table and then down. And now we are going to passively extend their knees and hips and kind of bring their uh, legs in alignment. Now that we're down at the feet, we can hook our thumbs underneath the medial malleoli and assess for superior inferior deviation. And in this instance, you can see that the left medial malleolus is superior. So now we're going to come up to the ASISs. We're going to move up to the iliac crests, follow them down until we find the ASISs. Then we're going to take our thumbs hook underneath the ASISs and assess for superior and inferior deviation. So on the left side, again, we see that this ASIS is superior relative to the right one. And if we move our thumbs medial and create some vertical tables here, we can notice that the left ASIS is also slightly more lateral than the right one. If we were to create an imaginary midline, we'll notice that that ASIS is slightly more lateral. The next landmark we want to identify is the pubic tubercles. Now we have two ways that we can approach this. The first is to use the heel of our hand on the umbilicus and then work our way down. So I'm going to put the heel of my hand on your belly button and then push my way down little by little. I'm looking for the bone that's down here in the front of your pelvis. Let me know if, um, if I miss it. Okay. Uh, also, let me know if you're uncomfortable at any point, okay? All right, so knowing where the umbilicus is, putting the heel of the hand in the umbilicus, pressing down, pressing down, pressing down, pressing down. And once you get to that pubic tubercle, you'll feel it inferior to the heel of your hand, and then you can switch your fingers so that your thumbs are level, and then move further down, and then rest on top of the pubic tubercles. An alternate approach is to start with your thumbs in that table position up at the uh, umbilicus. You can find the iliac crest, um, come across to the umbilicus and then just press with your thumbs slowly and continue pressing little by little until you feel the tension near the pubic tubercles and then you press down in order to find the pubic tubercle. So I'm noticing that this left pubic tubercle is slightly more superior than the right one. I can also evaluate for tenderness at the pubic tubercle. Is there any tenderness there? No. And I can also move uh, to the midline and assess the pubic symphysis. So is there any tenderness there? All right, I'm also assessing for any uh, protrusion, which would indicate compression, or any indentation that would indicate gapping of the pubic symphysis. So now with that information on hand, we can come up with our pelvis diagnosis. We had a standing flexion test that was positive on the left. We had PSIS that was inferior and medial on the left. 
we also had a media malleolus that was superior on the left, an ASIS that was superior on the left, an ASIS that was also lateral on the left, and a pubic tubercle that was superior on the left side. That gives us an innominate diagnosis of a left posterior innominate or a left posteriorly rotated innominate. Also gives us a left out flare. And if there was significant tenderness at the pubic symphysis uh, and significant motion restriction at the pubic symphysis, we might also have a superior pubic shear.